Hello and welcome as I prepare to read lesson three of my write out loud uh, writing studies 101 lesson three. This is the short story that spawned twin crossing series which is going to be an illustrated novel coming out December 2017. The literary device is imaginative world. The sun begins to rise just as the citizens of Twin Crossing are about to start their day. The sun climbed higher and higher, its rays shining brightly into curtain-covered windows while yawns and coffee makers start starting can be heard everywhere on Main Street. It isn't till the sun comes closer to the house up on the hill that it does what it's always done ever since it appeared out of nowhere years ago. It stops in awe at its odd shape and color. And there the sun will stay transfixed just a few inches from the slightly tilting post barely holding the house up until its one occupant makes an appearance. Sounds of locks and chains are heard. Then the bright red front doorknob slowly begins to turn as an old-looking cane pokes out the front door. The cane, and I need to describe the ornate cane uh, in this little parenthesis here. However, this is no bother to Otto von Kraus, who carries it around as a requirement more so than a necessity. It's rumored this cane was once in the possession of the great bard William Shakespeare, who used its powers to write his best works. The one who owns it now grips the top tightly and uses it to push the door all the way open. Shielding his eyes from the unmoving sun, a boy about the age of twelve, with short blonde hair, square glasses, and freckles all over his face, takes a reluctant step outside. Hey, what did I tell you about hanging around here? Otto von Kraus says, speaking up to the sky in the general direction of the sun. Yeah, I'm talking to you. Get a move on. Go on. The day must begin, and it cannot until you go first. The sun flickers at Otto, then resumes its daily routine of rising to its rightful place in the sky. Otto clicks his tongue up at the sun, turns, and, shaking his head, walks back into the house. To hear his voice and the way he walks, you would swear he was much older than twelve years old, and you'd be correct. Otto is, in fact, ninety-six years old. No, it's true. Today is his 96th birthday. And if you don't believe me, just take a peek in through that window right there and see for yourself. Go ahead. I gave myself two notes. One to change the language and tone of this paragraph I just read. The other is not to speak directly to the reader, but instead talk about Otto and that he's both 12 and 96 years old at the same time. So to further explain how that's possible. Inside the house, there were things cluttered everywhere. In fact, it looks like the house is bigger on the inside than on the outside. In the farthest corner of the room, Otto sits at a table, completely covered with nutcrackers varying in sizes, all facing him. In between him and the nutcrackers, on one small section of the table, is a small cupcake with a tiny lit candle in the middle. Otto's shoulders are slumped and his head is down as he sighs, making the candle's flame flicker slightly. Suddenly he perks up, clasps his hands together in feigned surprise at the cupcake before him, pretending he's seeing this all for the first time. For me, you guys shouldn't have, and I thought you forgot my birthday. Here, let me make a wish and blow out the... He stops short of blowing out the candle when he thinks he hears a light knock on his door. Did you hear that? He asked the nutcrackers. No, I didn't think so. Impossible. No one ever knocks on my door. He takes in a deep breath. <gasps> tap, tap, tap. Otto stands so suddenly the chair he's in falls backwards with a whack to the hardwood floor. He's suddenly unsure of what to do. His eyes dart around the room looking for a place to hide, but every cupboard is overflowing, so instead he decides to stand perfectly still. Tap, tap, tap. 
His eyes widen as he places a finger to his lips, signaling his nutcrackers to stay still and quiet. He takes a step backward, forgetting the chair that toppled over not one minute ago. His foot gets caught, and as he begins to fall, he grabs the edge of the table instead, pulling it towards him, making all the nutcrackers begin to sway, some of them hitting the floor just as he does with a thud. He rubs the back of his head, which hit a bookshelf, causing one rather large book to fall on him. Tap, tap, all right already, he shouts towards the front door as he stands, picking up some of the nutcrackers that fell along the way, inspecting each one for any major damages. I'm coming, hold your damn horses. Don't you know after knocking twice if no one answers that means, he says, stopping short of his sentence when he opens the door and no one is there. Otto jumps back from the doorway, looking down at the source of the sound, to see a little girl standing there. She has her hair in pigtails and held in place by two yellow ribbons. It matches perfectly with the white daisy pattern dress she's wearing. The one odd thing about her, besides the fact she dared to knock on the door of the strange house on the hill, is she's wearing no shoes, just socks that look like they used to be clean at one time in their life. Who are you? The little girl pushes past him, putting her left thumb in her mouth as she enters without saying a word. Her eyes begin to widen upon seeing all the nutcrackers on the table, and she runs towards them with her right hand outstretched as if to grab one. Otto quickly realizes what she's about to do, slams his front door shut, and sprints ahead of her, placing his body like a shield between her and his prized nutcrackers. She stops short of bumping into him, trying to look around him at the nutcrackers crackers but wherever she moves he mirrors her listen you have to get out of here okay are you lost he points towards his front door trying to get her to go in that direction but she won't budge she just stands in front of him with her large brown eyes and long lashes blinking as if she's not understanding what he's saying what's your name he asks hoping he can get her in to start talking eventually talking her into leaving his house olive Olive, really, he questions, folding his arms across his chest. That's a funny name. How old are you? How old are you? She retorts, taking her thumb out of her mouth. Olive was my grandma's name. That's great, kid. Now, do you mind? I was kind of in the middle of something here, he says, trying to guide her toward the front door. Aren't you too old to be playing with dolls? Plus, you're a boy. Mommy says dolls are for girls only. Otto stops pushing Olive towards the door and looks down at her in horror for the statement she just made. These are not dolls, he shouts as he waves his arm in their general direction. These are nutcrackers. He picks one up gently and shows it to her at a distance so she doesn't touch it by accident. Some are even collectibles like this one. He admires it lovingly as he gently places it back on the table. You're weird, Olive says, giggling. Don't laugh at me, Otto begins to whine. I wasn't laughing at you. Don't be sad. Olive walks over to Otto and wraps her arms around him, giving him a big hug. This petrifies him as he can't recall ever being hugged before. He stands very still, waiting for what she's doing to be over. She realizes he stiffened and lets him go. Haven't you ever been hugged before? How old are you? Like six? You're way too young to be asking personal questions and entering a stranger's home uninvited. Where are your parents? I'm not six. I'm eight. I'm just a little short for my age is all. How old are you? Like ten? Talking like this is your house or something. Hey, where's that creepy old guy anyway? She asks, realizing whose house she's in. She begins to look around cautiously with her eyes as she walks backwards towards the front door. The creepy old guy, Otto asks inquisitively. Then he cracks a smile, realizing who she's talking about. Oh, him. He's not here right now. Yeah, I'll bet. Is it true he's a vampire and that's why we only ever see him at night? Is there like a coffin somewhere where he sleeps? For an eight-year-old, you sure do have a vivid imagination, Otto responds, walking over to the tiny kitchen area to pour himself some tea. 
Although she is afraid the old man who lives in the house will emerge from some dark corner at any moment, she still is nosy enough to follow Otto into the kitchen to see what he's doing. Yuck! Are you gonna drink that? she asks, scrunching her face up as he methodically dips the tea bag with one hand and holds his mug in the other. Want some? Ill, gross! How can you drink that stuff? How old are you again? Depends on your definition of age, Olive. He walks past her out of the kitchen and back to the table filled with nutcrackers. He writes the chair from earlier to sit in, sips his tea, and watches her every move. My definition? she asks, turning suddenly towards him with a grin on her face, as if she's uncovered a secret. Boom, boom, boom! Just then there's a loud knock on Otto's front door, causing him to toss his full mug of tea clear across the room in fright. As it crashes to the floor, shattering upon impact, the muffled sounds of two concerned parents can barely be heard outside. Jesus H. Christ, what is it with all these visitors today? A man goes practically one hundred years without so much as a visit from the mailman, but today... Oh, today I get no peace, not even on my birthday. Otto argues to himself as he opens the front door in a violent rage. What? he screams, scaring his two new visitors half to death. Um, where the, 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 uh, oh, 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 Henry's, stutters Mr. O. Henry as he shields his wife behind him with his body. Congratulations, you know your last name. Was that why you decided to interrupt me on my birthday or was there something in particular you wanted? Otto asks, folding his arms and standing as tall as he can, considering he's just a 12-year-old boy, in front of Mr. and Mrs. O'Henry. It is then they realize he's just a boy and shouldn't be so terrified of him, yet they are. Mrs. O'Henry steps from behind her husband to stand next to him as she looks down on the boy with trepidation. What if she really... What if he really is some child-eating ogre like the town gossips make him out to be? We think our daughter might have wandered into your house. We'd like her back, intact, Mrs. O'Henry responds, much more sternly and adamantly than intended. Why, yes, there is such a young person here who may fit your vague description. Perhaps you can convince her to get out of my house, he says, ushering the parents inside with his hands, but they don't move. Are you going to come get her, or shall I keep her? The old Henrys remain rooted in place as a mischievous smile appears on Otto's face. He begins to slowly close the door, hoping this will snap them out of it, and it does. Mr. O'Henry pushes past his wife and slips through the front door past Otto without touching a thing. Olive? Olive, are you in here? Mr. O'Henry shouts into the very cluttered house. He's frantically looking around, his eyes not staying in one location for more than a second. His wife joins him in the middle of the living room and grips his left forearm tightly, not taking her eyes off the strange young boy. She begins to poke her husband incessantly, trying to get his attention to turn towards the boy who is staring at her just as deeply as she's staring at him. Otto maintains eye contact with Mrs. O'Henry while he carefully maneuvers his way towards the kitchen. "'Honey, please, I'm trying to find our little Olive,' Mr. Henry says, snapping at his wife, finally looking in her general direction. She tears her eyes away from the boy long enough to signal to her husband to look over to where he's just moved. Mr. O'Henry slowly turns his entire body towards Otto, who is now pointing gingerly towards the farthest corner of the kitchen, under the sink behind a closed cabinet door. Mr. O'Henry makes his way towards it, careful not to get too close to Otto, as he sidesteps past him. Olive, honey, are you in there? He questions, bending down in the cap to the cabinet under the sink and opening it slowly, afraid of what he might find if this is all some sick trick. Out pops Olive's head from the cabinet, scaring her father so unexpectedly he falls on his backside as his wife yelps out in shock. Olive, come here, come here right this instant, her mother demands, pointing to the spot in front of her. Olive sighs deeply and rolls her eyes as she gingerly steps out from the cabinet under the sink and walks past her father who's getting to his feet, dusting himself off. As she walks past Otto, he winks at her and she winks right back at him with a smirk. What did we tell you about running off on us? You are grounded for a whole week, young lady. There will be no going out with your friends. 
Friends? Mom, you know I don't have any friends. They all pick on me, Olive replies, cutting off her mother, looking at Otto the whole time she's talking, as if she's talking just to him. Now you're lying too? Of course you have friends, and don't let me hear you saying anything different ever again, Mrs. O'Henry shouts, grabbing her daughter's shoulders and turning her body to face her and stop looking over at the boy. We're going home. She looks up at her husband and with wide eyes motions to the front door to signal they are leaving. She pushes her daughter out the front door, explaining to her on the way out how she is never to come back to this house again, leaving her husband trailing behind them. It was lovely meeting you. Perhaps next time we visit, we can meet your grandfather and have a small get-together? Honey, let's go, Mrs. O'Henry shouts back into the house for her husband to stop lingering. He gives a small wave and smile in Otto's general direction, gives one more glance about the cluttered house, not believing so many things can be crammed into such a space, and leaves, closing the door quietly behind him. Otto waves back, but there is no one around to see him. He's left alone in his living room again, with his uneaten birthday cake, cupcake, now ruined from the melted wax. He he chucks it in the trash bin near the kitchen, grabs a small wooden box off the kitchen counter, and, grabbing the doorknob to the back door, takes a deep breath as he opens it, letting in the glow of the brightly lit moon. As he takes one step across the threshold, allowing the moonlight to cover his body completely, his eyes closed, he takes another deep breath, then opens his eyes to reveal the other side. Otto looks down at his hand still on the doorknob and watches as short gray hairs begin to grow on his knuckles. He smiles to himself as he walks completely through the back door and over to his rocking chair a few inches away. The table beside his chair still has remnants of the pipe he smoked the night before. He places the wooden box on his lap and carefully pulls back the lid to reveal a very ornate pipe that looks like he's owned it for years. He removes it from the box with one hand and the packet of his favorite blend with the other as he begins to ready his pipe for a nice relaxing evening on the other side. Out in the distance as he leans back in his rocking chair with his eyes closed and the pipe hanging from the corner of his mouth, he can hear the sweet sounds of people in houses going about their daily routine, minding their own business. No one ever comes knocking on his door here, especially not some nosy little girl. Then again, up until today, he had been left alone. No one ever dared to knock on his door, let alone barge into his house. Protocol dictates no one is to enter the premises of the gatekeeper. The manual doesn't exactly say why no one is allowed, but then again, Otto hasn't seen that damn manual in so long, he hardly remembers what it does say. He makes a mental note to clean the house and find that damn manual. He always makes this mental note, but never actually remembers to follow through. He opens his eyes and looks out at the night sky, fascinated by how many shooting stars go by in a matter of seconds. No matter how many times he's seen it, he never gets tired of this sight. He sighs, enjoying the serenity, quiet and calm. Crash! He jumps out of his seat, noticing the sun is almost up on the other side. How long have I been here? He asks himself. He always tends to lose track of time whenever he visits the other side. Crash! He turns towards his house and quickly makes for the back door, biting down his pipe tightly in his mouth. He flings the door open and it bangs against a cluttered bookcase, sending old magazines that weren't stacked very neatly to begin with crashing to the floor. Who's there? He asks, squinting into his living room. He quickly closes the back door in case someone who should be there should notice the sun coming up. On this side, the sun is just beginning to set. He shakily grabs for a candle from the several dozen he has on the shelf, just below the magazines that fell. He lights it with the book of matches he always keeps in his pocket, just in case. The overhead light switch is located by the front door. He quickly calculates his odds. If there's a monster in here... Monster? Listen to me. I think my 12-year-old self is influencing me more than I care to admit. No such thing as monsters, Otto. Besides, you did remember to lock the door when the old Henrys left, didn't you? He can't remember if he had, and his heart sinks in his chest. 
This is bad, he says out loud to what he hopes is an empty room, but he can feel someone is there. Suddenly, the overhead chandelier comes on, blinding Otto momentarily. He raises his free hand to his eyes to shield them from the light as he scans the area around the light switch. Nothing. Hey, mister! Olive says, standing right in front of Otto, looking up at him. He takes a startled step back, slamming into the back door. What are you doing back here? Get out! Back here? Were you here earlier? I didn't see or hear you. Were you hiding? Where's your grandson, Otto? She questions a mile a minute, not even stopping to take a breath. She starts walking around the living room, looking under tables, a seat cushion, and even in the cabinet she was hiding in earlier that day. Otto blows out the candle in his hand and places it back on the shelf it came from. Everything has its own place, as he follows her into the kitchen area to see what she is up to. Look, Olive, he's not here right now, so why don't you go on home? How do you know my name if you wasn't here? She asks, getting right up under him as she bends her head back to stare him in the eyes. You've got whiskers, same as my grandpa. She scrunches up her nose as she pushes past him. It's the first time anyone has touched Otto in so long he can't remember. It catches him off guard as he slowly places a hand on his stomach, where she just shoved him. Smoking that is bad for you, I know. It's what got my grandpa in the end. Or at least that's how grandma explained it to me. She walks towards the back door and stands in front of it with her hands on her hips. Something isn't right. She turns to the front door, then back, looking at both doors several times over. I've never seen a back door with no windows before. She reaches her hand out to open it. Maybe he's playing back here, you think? Otto finally comes back to his senses and sprints towards her with the speed and agility of a 12-year-old. He grabs her wrist as she was just reaching out towards the door and pulls her away roughly. He drags her towards the front door, opens it, and yanks her through it. Ow, you're hurting me, mister. I just wanted to play with Otto. I told you he's not here. Now go home and don't come back here ever again. Otto slams the front door shut and this time remembers to lock it. Okay, mister. Tell Otto I'll see him tomorrow afternoon. Olive shouts through the door. Otto shakes his head and smiles to himself as he notices a few of his nutcrackers are still toppled over on the table. He begins to write them when something upstairs hits the floor with a thud. He looks up nervously at the ceiling. No one is upstairs, he thinks. He knows it. Just the girl came in here and she was by herself, wasn't she? She wouldn't invite her friends over. She says so herself. She has no friends. He walks over to the spiral staircase and gripping the banister begins his ascent to the top floor. His bedroom is the only room upstairs and the cleanest in the entire house. His bed is in the far corner of the room opposite the staircase and along one wall are his most prized books, neatly arranged on the shelves. Along the tops of the bookcases are even more nutcrackers. These are the ones given to him by his parents when he was young, or at least that's what he likes to tell himself. He has windows on two sides of his bedroom so he won't miss a thing when he's taking notes on the lives of the people on both sides. Shining through is the moonlight on one side and the sunlight on the other. The effect is otherworldly. He looks down on the floor and notices in front of one of the bookcases an old dusty book lying face down on the floor. This must be what he heard hit the floor, he thinks to himself. He walks over and picks it up, not recognizing what it is right away. He glances over at the bookcase it must have fallen from and sees no space where it could have previously resided. I put a note to myself, add more about Otto's backstory as a child. He sits at his desk, located next to his bed, and turns on his desk lamp that's attached to a large magnifying glass. His eyes aren't what they used to be, in order to get a closer look. It looks to be older than dirt, and he handles it very gently, afraid it may fall apart if he breathes on it as he examines it from all angles. He blows away dust from the cover to reveal its title, The Gatekeeper's Manual, All You Need to Know and What You Don't Want to Know. The manual? But how did... He looks around the room, expecting there to be someone lurking in the shadows, about to come out at any moment, but nothing is stirring. He places the manual down on the desk, under the magnifying glass, and turns off the lamp. 
I'll look at this later. I'm exhausted. He readies himself for bed, changing out of his ratty old clothes and into his pajamas, closing all of his curtains so as to keep out the sunlight and the moonlight, shrouding his room in complete darkness. He then gets into bed and throws the covers over his head as he immediately begins to snore. The window next to his desk slowly creeps open. The curtain slides over slightly, just enough for wind to blow into the room. The manual on the desk is blown open by the strong wind, flipping through multiple pages, then abruptly stopping. The window closes and the curtain moves back into its previous position. What to do in the event of an uninvited visitor. The End